From the soaring pyramids of Egypt to the mystical Petra carved into the desert cliffs, let's travel back in time to witness the real grandeur of these amazing structures when they were fully functional. Get ready for a journey into the amazing world of human creativity. This is a story about how innovative and skilled we can be. Don't miss it. Starting with the Pyramids The Great Pyramids of Giza, located in modern-day Cairo on the west bank of the Nile River, are truly remarkable structures. Of all the pyramids in history, these are the most renowned. The Great Pyramid, built for Pharaoh Khufu, is not only the oldest and largest pyramid in Giza, but also the sole survivor of the legendary Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. Although we know relatively little about Khufu's reign, his pyramid stands as a testament to his grandeur. With an average base side length of 755.75 feet, 230 meters, and an original height of 481.4 feet, 147 meters, it holds the distinction of being the largest pyramid ever constructed. Adjacent to this magnificent structure are three smaller pyramids built for Khufu's queens, as well as a tomb that contained his mother, Queen Hetraperis's empty sarcophagus. And that's not all. Surrounding Khufu's pyramids are rows of mastabas, which are tombs where royal relatives or officials were laid to rest, in order to accompany and support him in the afterlife. Another popular pyramid is the Pyramid of Kefir, located in Giza. It was built by Pharaoh Kefir around 2558 to 2532 BC. It is the second tallest pyramid in Giza and houses the Great Sphinx, a large statue of a man with a lion's body. The statue is made of limestone and is 240 feet long and 66 feet tall, making it the largest statue in ancient civilization. In the 18th dynasty, the Great Sphinx became a worshipped object, representing Horus, the god of kingship, healing, protection, the sun, and the sky. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the actual purpose of the pyramids, with others claiming that they were built to be used as navigation points for an alien species that once visited the planet. But nobody has been able to prove that yet. What do you think? Next up, we have Stonehenge. Built around 4,500 years ago, around the same time as the Great Pyramid in Egypt, this amazing monument shows off great skill. Made of carefully shaped sarsen stones, it stands as a symbol of an important time in British and European history when people started to interact differently with their environment. Over time, many theories have been suggested about why and how Stonehenge was built. Today, most people believe it was an ancient place of worship that was carefully lined up with the stars and planets. It's a great example of the special places that were built during this time in Britain and Ireland. These places were used to honor ancestors and mark important times of the year. The sun was a key part of this belief system, and the way Stonehenge lines up with the sun at the solstice is a big part of its design. With amazing structures built over 1,500 years, or about 100 generations, Stonehenge is a lasting symbol of respect and cultural change. Stonehenge is a symbol of the past and a strong image of ancient success. And while our understanding of Stonehenge continues to change, it's not just a record of the past, it's still a powerful and interesting place that continues to inspire visitors and communities today. Moving on, we have the Temple of Artemis. Alright, let's take a look at the amazing history of Ephesus. Back in the day, they built this jaw-dropping Temple of Artemis to honor the Greek goddess herself. This masterpiece of classical design was constructed around 550 BCE and was all about grandeur and luxury. Can you believe it had a whopping 127 majestic white marble columns? And get this, each column reached an impressive height of about 60 feet. People from all over the world would come to this holy place, hoping for blessings from the kind-hearted goddess. When they arrived, they would see the altars of the temple beautifully decorated with valuable gems, extravagant gifts, and stunning jewelry. The pilgrims deeply respected Artemis, the goddess who protected them, their crops, and their loved ones, while also being associated with hunting and forests. 
The front of the temple was adorned with intricate sculptures and friezes. Inside stood a breathtaking statue of Artemis, crafted by skilled artisans and adorned in gold and ivory. It was said that no words could fully capture the magnificence of this masterpiece because it was so incredibly inspiring. But amidst the splendor and sanctity, the temple evolved into more than a worship site. It became this bustling market with sellers and traders from all over. It was like a melting pot of cultures and goods, with people selling spices, textiles, and other exotic goods from distant lands. Unfortunately, the temple didn't have a happy ending. It got burnt down, not once, but twice. First in 356 BCE by a rogue arsonist looking for attention, and then again in 262 BCE during an invasion. Even though the temple is long gone now, it's still remembered as one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Talk about creativity and devotion. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe as we move on to the next ancient site. Next up, we have the Colosseum. The Colosseum, or the Flavian Amphitheater, is a stunning building in the center of Rome. This amazing structure draws in many visitors who are fascinated by its deep history and detailed design. The name Colosseum comes from a huge statue that used to be nearby. Built in the first century CE by the Flavian dynasty, it was a place for exciting events that were very popular in olden times, like wild animal hunts and gladiator fights. Even today, the Colosseum continues to amaze with its size. As the biggest amphitheater in the world, it had complex stage equipment and offered great services for its excited audience. The amphitheater is a sign of the empire's glory. Over the years, it has changed its look and its use, becoming a structured but open space for the Roman community. In 438, when gladiator games were stopped by Valentinian III, the amphitheater slowly started to decline. During the Middle Ages and Renaissance, it was even used as a source of building materials, some of which were used to build St. Peter's Basilica. It also became a home for animals and craft workshops, and over time, it became a Christian place. After the Romantic period, when the beauty of the ruin attracted writers and artists, it became a place of systematic digging and repair work. Today, the amphitheater is a monument to art and human cleverness that has lasted through the centuries. It still looks like a welcoming and lively structure, offering a wide view of its inside spaces and stunning views of the city from its outside arches. We obviously can't leave out the incredible city of Petra. The ancient city of Petra in Jordan was lost to the Western world for many years. It was carved directly into colorful red, white, pink, and sandstone cliffs. Petra is found among rough desert canyons and mountains in what is now the southwestern part of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. Petra was a busy trading hub and the capital of the Nabataean Empire from 400 BC to 106 AD. The city was empty and almost ruined for many years. Only in the early 1800s did a European traveler dress up in Bedouin clothes sneak into the mysterious place, since outsiders were not allowed access to the place. During its prime, Petra was the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom from around 312 BCE to 106 CE. It was a rich trading center that benefited from its perfect location among important trade routes. The Nabataeans built complex water management systems like dams, water tanks, and water channels to expertly handle the area's limited water resources. This allowed the city to support a large population and the caravans that passed through easily. The treasury of al Khazneh, the most famous site in Petra, is a breathtaking facade carved into the cliffs that looks like a temple. Its purpose is still unknown. There are rumors that there are hidden treasures there, just don't be crazy enough to go searching for them, unless you want to upset the superstitious locals. The complex tombs, temples, theaters, and the stunning monastery called Ad-Dir, which is located on a mountain and offers beautiful views, are all examples of the Nabataeans' architectural genius. Like all great empires, Petra's wealth eventually declined. With the fall of the Silk Road and changing trade patterns, the city lost its importance, eventually fading into obscurity 
in the advancing desert sands. Today, Petra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, attracting thousands of visitors every year who marvel at its faded beauty. Finally, we have the Taj Mahal. During the Mughal Empire in the 17th century, Agra, India, the Taj Mahal, a beautiful architectural wonder, was constructed. The Emperor Shah Jahan commissioned it as a memorial to his adored wife Mumtaz Mahal, who died giving birth. Thousands of talented artisans, workers, and craftsmen worked tirelessly to bring this big idea to life throughout the roughly 22-year construction process that started in 1632. Made from gleaming white marble quarried from Rajasthan, the monument exudes elegance and grace. The perfect symmetry and detailed design still amaze visitors today. Stepping inside, one is greeted by the breathtaking centerpiece, the cenotaphs of Shah Jahan and Mumtaz Mahal, adorned with precious gemstones and delicate carvings. For most of us who are not familiar with the term, cenotaph refers to a monument built to honor people whose remains are interred elsewhere or whose remains cannot be recovered. The play of light during different times of the day creates a mesmerizing spectacle, leaving admirers enchanted. The Taj Mahal's gardens and fountains provide a peaceful setting for visitors to reflect on its love story. The monument remains a symbol of architectural excellence and everlasting love since it was built. The Taj Mahal underwent a period of neglect and disrepair for two centuries following the death of Shah Jahan. However, in the late 18th century, during British rule in India, Lord Curzon took up the task of restoring this iconic mausoleum complex. This restoration project was undertaken as part of an effort to safeguard and preserve India's rich artistic and cultural heritage. And that's all for today. Till next time, cheers.